from corpus luteum. These hormones result in proliferation of cells of the ductolobular epithelium along with increased number of SNI. Moreover, there is an increase in the fat and water content within the breast stroma. The net result of these changes is an increase in the breast volume, compelling some ladies to even change their garment to a larger size. The increase in breast volume causes pressure on the pain nerve endings, resulting in breast pain or discomfort. This is called nostalgia. In some degree, this nostalgia is a normal physiological response. However, when it becomes severe and lasts for more than a week, disturbing the activities of daily life, we need to consider it as pathological and treat it. Initially, in most women, there is a uniform growth of cells throughout the breast. Later on, some cells become hyper-responsive to the hormones, resulting in more growth of the ducts and alveoli in some area, resulting in nodularity. If you examine a lady with nodularity in the premenstrual phase, you will encounter pea-sized, often tender nodules scattered throughout the breast with soft and supple breast tissue in between. Marked growth of ductolobular cells along with the stroma in a localized manner may result in formation of a discrete lump in the breast called fibroadenoma. Fibroadenoma is not a true neoplasm and is now considered as part of handy manifestation. This view is supported by the fact that some girls experience increased growth of fibroadenoma in the premenstrual phase and reduction in the size after the onset of menstrual flow. Proliferation of the ductal epithelium leads to ductal hyperplasia, which may result in increased secretion presenting as physiological nipple discharge in some ladies. Localized growth of cells within a dilated duct leads to a papilloma formation. It has a central fibrovascular core and papillae lined by myoepithelial and luminal cells. Sometimes the papilloma may undergo infarction by torsion of the stalk resulting in bloody nipple discharge. In the perimenopausal period, involutory changes with overgrowth of the fibroconnective tissue around the ducts leads to ductal blockade. Dilatation and unfolding of the lobules along with pent-up secretion result in cyst formation. Initially, microscopic cysts are formed. Many such microscopic cysts may join to form a macro cyst. Thus, we can appreciate that Andy concept enables us to understand the mechanism of most of the benign breast symptoms, mainly the breast pain, nodularity, the change in breast size, nipple discharge, formation of fibroadenoma, breast cysts, and duct papilloma. Thank you. So this was the basis on which benign breast disease is now understood. And now we go to the PowerPoint presentation explaining different types of benign breast conditions. So let us go to the, this was the, so please appreciate that ND is not a diagnosis, right? ND is a concept, A-N-D-I is a concept which helps us understand the pathogenesis of the benign breast conditions. And you can explain, you can use these, uh, you know, concepts to train your patients. A lot of, you know, girls have uh, taken biology in their school or, you know, uh, college. So they'll understand estrogen, progesterone, ovaries. So if you explain them, the, look, uh, you have ovaries and around this time when you have menstruation, estrogen, progesterone rise and fall. So they will appreciate, they will understand it is physiological. So it helps the physician and patient to understand the origin of the disease and its benign nature. And it also helps we as physicians to prescribe certain drugs to reduce this estrogen and progesterone surge in the luteal phase. And based on the same concept, now we have some more effective drugs 
uh, such as LH RH and log, which will suppress the LH and FSH secretion as well if patient has very severe mastalgia. So what is mastalgia? It is the commonest breast symptom that a lady comes to a breast clinic. It's estimated that about 18 to 19 out of 20 patients visiting a breast clinic will actually suffer from some type of mastalgia. Okay, so it is that common. And it is unfortunate that in most meetings, you know, whether it is surgeon society or breast society, they only talk of cancer. And there is a very small session, about 15 20 minute session on benign breast disease and mastalgia, which is unfortunate. So we must all appreciate that. 16 to 18 out of 20 patients with breast symptom will actually have mastalgia and you will have to understand it, console her and then treat it appropriately. And it is for this reason that because doctors and nurses do not understand it well, they prescribe wrong medicines. Even today, in spite of so much research, meta-analysis, People are still prescribing Evion, vitamin E, evening primrose oil. You go to any hospital and you'll find a lot of doctors, uh, you know, whether in private or in government, prescribing evening primrose oil, Primosa. And we have shown later, we'll present the results of meta analysis that it has no benefit. The effect is the same as placebo. And high dose of vitamin E actually is associated with hemorrhagic stroke. So if you tell a patient that if you're, I give, I'm giving you vitamin E and later on you may have hemorrhagic stroke, I'm sure nobody will take it. So we have understood the hormonal control, estrogen is inducing the initial development and the tissue which is acted upon by the estrogen, primed by estrogen, is then acted by progesterone. So progesterone is responsible for final maturation and branching and then secretion, whereas the estrogen is the first priming hormone. Without estrogen, no breast will form. And prolactin, of course, is the milk letting hormone, milk secreting hormone, and oxytocin is the milk letting hormone, and to some extent, other hormones such as insulin, corticosteroids, and growth hormone also have a minor role in the physiology of the memory gland. So, let us just recap the TDLU concept, terminal ductal lobular unit. The terminal part of the milk duct, tertiary milk duct, together with the lobule, collectively known as terminal ductal lobular unit. And it is the most active and most hormone responsive part of the memory gland. All the hormones work here, estrogen, progesterone, prolactin, they all work on the TDLU. And most diseases of the breast, whether benign or malignant, they all start from TDLU. So TDLU is the original tissue on which is the, uh, you can you know, explain any disease, whether it is breast pain, nodularity, fibroadenoma, breast cyst, or even cancers. They all start from TDLU. So, Hormones are causing cyclical changes in estrogen and progesterone. They cause cell proliferation. Initially, there is uniform um, proliferation of cells. Later on, some cells become hyper-responsive, and that's why you have nodule formation. Estrogen is also responsible for fat deposition, and progesterone also responsible for fluid retention. Okay, uh, just a word about breast development. Till the age 10 to 11, it, about 10 to 11, uh, the male and female children are alike as far as their uh, memory gland is concerned. This is just a small, tiny little button on the pectoral region. Around 10 to 12 years of age, about a year before the mens menarche, one year before the menarche, starts the development of the breast. It is called tilarche. So tilarche precedes menarche by about one year or so. So by that age, uh, due to the estrogen and progesterone, there will be proliferation of the ductal of blood tissue. Initially, a rounded mound will be formed because all the cells are growing almost at the same rate. So like a spherical growth, a sphere is growing equally in all directions. 
However, at around age 14, we find that the ducts, ducts begin to elongate more than rest of the tissue. So what will happen? They cannot go backwards because you have a rigid chest wall on the back, the ribs and pectoral muscle. So they can only grow forward. And due to this elongation of the ducts, the ductal system, more growth of ducts compared to rest of the breast mound, the nipple forms. So nipple is due to prolongation of the ductal system, which protrude anteriorly. So failure of this prolongation will result in lack of nipple formation. And this is called inversion of the nipple. It's a congenital uh, situation and it is not associated with any disease. Sometimes if it's of extreme degree, like an inverted umbilicus, then some dirt can accumulate and can cause infection. So this is inversion, congenital nipple inversion, failure of the nip milk ducts to elongate and protrude. So if you see the spectrum of benign breast diseases in different age groups. So let us take the early age group between 15 to 25 years age, early reproductive life of a lady. We have proliferation, more pronounced proliferation of the lobular system can lead to fibroadenoma. It is also associated with stromal growth. That's why we say fibroadenoma is a mixed lesion of epithelial as well as mesenchymal element. We have some fibrous tissue and some hypertrophic epithelial and duct system. Nipple eversion, again, loss of eversion will lead to nipple inversion. So some abnormality associated in early reproductive life in the form of either fibroadenoma or adolescent hypertrophy or nipple inversion. Let us take more mature lady between age 25 to 40. Marked effect of the estrogen progesterone on the memory tissue may lead to psychical nostalgia with or without nodularity. Proliferation of the ductal epithelium may lead to nipple discharge, which is benign in 95% of cases. Let us take a lady around age 35 onwards. They say ovaries begin to shrink from age 35, even much before the menopause sets in. So ovaries begin to shrink around this age, 35, and this results in less and less of estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen and progesterone act as growth factors. Growth factor means that substance which causes mitosis of the cells. So mitosis of the ducts and lobules are responsible for this cyclical change throughout the reproductive life of a lady. Loss of this hormonal stimuli may lead to less growth of the ducts and the bules and proliferation of the fibrous tissue. This is called involutory change and the ductal oblate tissue is gradually replaced by more and more of fibrous tissue and this collagen deposition around the duct may lead to ductal obstruction or duct which in minor degree may just lead to dilatation or duct called ductectasia. And if it is more pronounced, blocks the ducts completely, then secretion collect inside the lobule and lead to a cyst formation as we saw in that movie. So this is about the spectrum of benign breast disease, all under the wide spectrum of A and DI, aberration in normal development and evolution. So proliferation, fibroadenoma, cyst and um, with the adolescent hypertrophy in early age, nostalgia with or without nodularity and some benign nipple discharge in the middle age group and involutory changes resulting in cyst formation and ductectasia in the last age group 35 onwards. Let's now come to nostalgia. I think we can take all the questions at the very end. Is that the plan, Dr. Rajuta? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. So we shall take the questions. So please keep uh, noting down the questions and we shall uh, try to answer as much as I know. I have very little knowledge. I'm a student of uh, breast diseases. I'm still learning uh, at this age. So let's come to the mastalgia. Also na no, uh, um, named as mastodenia and um, it's the commonest symptom leading or causing a lady to present to a breast clinic. And to some extent, all ladies have it. 
is just like some discomfort in the hypogastrium uh, just prior to the periods or during the menstrual cycle. So similarly, some discomfort in the mammary gland is almost universal phenomena. And we call it pathological and significant and need to be treated when it lasts for more than a week in a menstrual cycle, more than a week, seven days, or any pain that on a visual analog scale, visual analog scale of zero to 10 is more than three. Then we need to treat it. It's called significant pain. If you attend any pain clinic, they will say pain score of one to two on a scale of 10 is probably minimal pain and you can just reassure or just give some ordinary painkiller. But any pain having severity greater than three on a scale of zero to 10 is significant pain and we need to understand its cause and treat it. Or any pain that interferes with the activities of daily life. She is a school teacher. She goes to school and she says for three days or four days in a week, I cannot write on the whiteboard or blackboard. Um, and so I need to take leave. She is a home uh, maker or works in the kitchen. And for three to four days, she cannot iron the clothes or she cannot cut the vegetables like that. You know, household work is scrubbing the floor. So if it is interfering with the activities of daily life, regardless of what the severity is, whether it is for two days or three days, we need to consider it significant and treat it. So this is about the nostalgia. Classically, we classify into two types. Those who, which have a significant association with menstrual cycle. So they typically begin around day 14, day of ovulation, with the rising levels of estrogen and progesterone. The severity of the breast pain will increase reaching an a peak level around day 27 to 28. And then with the onset of the menstrual flow, the pain will be eased off. And then lady will remain comfortable for another fortnight or so. And again, pain will restart. So this is typical periodicity or cyclical pain with pre-menstrual exacerbation. So this is pronounced psychical nostalgia with premenstrual exacerbation is a typical hormone-related menstrual cycle. In the Western literature, um, about 60 to 70 percent of all breast pains fall into this category of cyclical type. When we studied in uh, at least in all India Institute of Medical Sciences, our breast clinic, we found that around only 40 percent, less than half the ladies actually had this type of pain as per their pain chart. It's often bilateral, may be diffuse, usually associated with some nodularity, tender nodularity, tenderness and nodularity being most prominent and conspicuous just prior to the menstrual cycle. So last week of the menstruation, you'll find tender nodules. And some ladies will suggest say they have heaviness and fullness and some of them have to increase the size of their undergarments in the last week. And typical age group involved is the young and middle-aged ladies. So it's a definite it's hormonal hours. basis. And uh, because it's related to menstrual cycle, pregnancy and lactation often relieve the pain and uh, drugs which influence the estrogen levels such as anti-estrogen tamoxifen, tormilefin, and centromand, they all relieve the pains, again, supporting the hormonal uh, basis. So there is some increased estrogenic response. Studies have not demonstrated high blood level of estrogen in these patients. Compared to the normal controls, you do not find that uh, the basal uh, levels of estrogen or progesterone are higher in these ladies compared to other ladies. But uh, certainly, there is increased responsiveness of the breast tissue to the estrogen. That's why it is relieved by the anti-estrogens and pregnancy and lactation. So there are some studies uh, from Dr. Sandeep Kumar from Lucknow who showed that the stimulated response of prolactin release from the anti pituitary uh, lact uh, lactotrop cells is stimulated in patients with cyclical nostalgia. And usually, Mastalgia is not considered a cancer risk. 
So uh, I think we just go to non-cyclical mesthalgia, which is relatively uncommon in the West. But in our society, we noticed that this was the major type of mesthalgia. And here, we do not find any relation to menstrual cycle. They can occur on any day of the menstrual cycle or may be present throughout the month. Can be unilateral or bilateral. And in some type patients, you may have only one quadrant involved or only subareolar, retroareolar region involved. Some women may complain of trigger point pain. We'll show a picture of a lady who had the trigger point pain later on on a video. Teed syndrome is a idiopathic costochondritis. Costochondral junction, usually second and third intercostal uh, space, they undergo inflammation for unknown reason, just like rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, there's no obvious reason. And this is called Teed syndrome. Uh, trauma in the form of blunt trauma or post biopsy or post surgery, post radiotherapy, can also lead, and rarely a cancer can also lead to pain of non cyclical origin. And sometimes it musculoskeletal pain preferred. So it can be of two types non cyclical mesthalgia can be a central type, central type, and a peripheral type. Peripheral from the lateral chest wall and central in the form of costochondritis or trigger point pain. So T. This is Teed syndrome. If you press hard on the costochondral junction here, just at the parasternal edge, you will find marked tenderness, usually on the second and third space. So when a lady comes to you in the clinic and says that, Doc, I have, a, I have breast pain. So it is our duty to distinguish a true breast pain from pain referred from the associated chest wall or from other areas like reflex esophagitis or pancreatitis, peptic ulcer pain. So, how do we distinguish? This is called a test of true breast tenderness. So, here you examine the lady in sitting position and elicit true breast tenderness, like we are doing here. And so, elicit true breast pain and tenderness. That means pain is arising from the substance of the breast. So let us see this small video. Yes. So we are eliciting. She complains this, uh, this 35 year old lady presents. Okay. Hmm. So this lady came with severe pain. So what we did that we elicited true breast tenderness. So you will see that as soon as we press here in the sitting position, she will wince with severe pain. See, can you see? Look at her face. Look at her face, right? So this is called true breast tenderness. And this is due to pain arising from the substance. Sometimes you can be have lateral chest wall pain, tenderness on the rib cage, or this is costochondral junction tenderness in this area, right? So, so this is called true breast tenderness. Some ladies will come to you and say, Doc, I have a lump in the breast, holding the mammary gland in this position. If anybody comes and says, in a standing or sitting position, doctor, I have a lump. You can be assured that she is creating a lump in her mind. So if somebody holds her memory gland and says, I have a lump, she is creating a lump in her mind. That's why we insist never to palpate the breast in sitting position. She is creating a lump in her mind. It's an apparent feeling of a lumpiness. That's why always palpate the breast in supine position, never in sitting or standing position. Traditionally, for many years, um, Cardiff Breast Clinic, um, located in the University Hospital of Wales, capital of Wales uh, in United Kingdom, has been a center for extensive research in the field of mystalgia, 
and there they develop this Cardiff pain chart. Here, a lady is given, it's like a pain diary. So you give like a, this chart, like a diary, and she has to record the severity of the pain on each day. But there were some problems. She had to fill the whole box if pain was severe, mild, half to one third, and no pain, just put a dot. And on the days she had menstrual period, she had to put P here. So imagine on these black boxes, how will you write P? So, and there was no way of recording the severity of the pain from day to day on a visual scale. So we advanced this pain chart and then we developed our own pain chart and it was published and you can take a reference. We will send you the copy of uh, this pain chart um, through the email and Dr. Rajuta can forward it to you. So this is the pain chart that we use. We have a separate pain chart for the right breast, for the left breast, and we record the menstrual cycle separately. Okay. So, and we give, on the same pain chart, we have printed the visual analog scale of 0 to 10. So a lady can read it and see. So like this lady, she had in the month of January, you can say that around the 18th, set, from 14th, 15th, pain score is 5, 5, 7, 8, 9, very severe pain, 8, 9. And then she had her period on 27th of January. And 27th is here. So then pain of score of 9 and 10 suddenly became 3 on the next day of menstrual period and then became 2 and then 0 and 0. Okay, this is a typical example of cyclical breast pain with pre-menstrual exacerbation, pain score increasing from 5 to 10 and then with the onset of menstrual flow, pain becomes 0. So typical example of cyclical breast pain with pre-menstrual exacerbation. So how do we manage these ladies? We evaluate her. If there is a lump, we have a duty to exclude it, um, um, exclude the cancer by performing triple assessment, by thorough physical examination and history, followed by breast imaging in the form of ultrasound of the breast and axilla, and mammogram if she is above 35. And if there is a discrete lump, a biopsy, core biopsy. Eighty-five percent of the women will be reassured by thorough examination, triple assessment, and some supportive measures like wearing a sport bra, which should be tight in the daytime and can be removed in the evening. Regular exercise, if, especially if she is overweight. Avoid excessive caffeine and coca, and some, you know, if she is taking say twenty cups of tea or lots of chocolate, then you can reduce, but otherwise of little value. Flax seeds, known in Hindi by the name Alsi, has been found to be very effective. In Canadian breast guidelines, they recommend as the first line of treatment, 30 grams of flax seeds, which is a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids, 30 gram on day one, uh, sorry, on a daily basis for a month, is very effective in reducing uh, 60 to 70 percent of the breast pain. Uh, sir, Wearing appropriate. Mm -hmm. sir, yes. uh, sorry to interrupt. We will have to move to the other group now. Yes, yes. Hello. Yes. Hello, Dr. Rajuta. Yeah, you're saying something. I'll send the link. We'll have to move to the other meeting link. Okay. So, what do I do? Switch yeah. it off? Yeah, I'll end this meeting and uh, I'll send you the link for the next one. Okay. So minimize this and then go to the next link. Yeah, I'm ending it. Okay.